In this video, we're going to talk about contractionary fiscal policy. In our last lesson, we defined fiscal policy, and we looked at a situation in which a country had a negative output gap, a recessionary gap, therefore needed to implement an expansionary policy, lowering taxes, increasing government spending with the aim of increasing the average price level and the level of national output back to full employment. But now we're looking at a situation in which a country has an inflationary gap. Output is beyond full employment. This economy is overheating, you could say and it has inflation that's higher than desirable. Its price level, PL1, is greater than the full employment price level of PLFE. This country is overheating. What it needs is contractionary fiscal policy. So let's start by defining contractionary fiscal policy. A contractionary fiscal policy is when government policymakers reduce the level of government spending or increase the level of taxation with the aim of reducing aggregate demand reducing national output and bringing the inflation rate down to a lower and more stable level. Contractionary fiscal policies are most likely to be used during a period of a positive output gap or an inflationary gap when an economy is producing beyond its full employment level. This could have been the result of some unexpected shock to aggregate demand, such as a stock market bubble that drastically increased household confidence and led to an increase in consumer spending, or perhaps a depreciation of the country's currency, which led to an unexpected increase in net exports, or perhaps there was a decrease in interest rates, which caused businesses to invest more in capital and technology. For whatever reason, this country has experienced an inflationary gap. Its unemployment rate is strangely too low. It's below the natural rate. There's no slack in the labor market. There's no possible way for this economy to continue growing without inflation getting out of control. Left unchecked, as you may recall from earlier lessons, this economy would most likely enter a recession on its own, which would be accompanied by even higher inflation as wages and other resource costs rise and short run aggregate supply shifts in, causing a recession and higher inflation in the form of cost push inflation. That's not something the government wants. So it may choose to implement a contractionary fiscal policy instead of waiting for the economy to get back to full employment with all the negative things that could happen in the long run. So to do so, the government could raise taxes, increase the level of taxation on households and firms. Let's walk through the mechanism by which an increase in taxes would help restore full employment in this country. Of course, higher taxes mean a reduction in disposable incomes among both households and firms, assuming that business taxes are also increased. When households experience lower disposable incomes, they reduce their level of consumption. They have less money in their pockets. And businesses may reduce their level of investment. They find it less attractive to invest in new capital. Now, both consumption and investment are components of aggregate demand. So these things are going to cause aggregate demand to decrease, which in turn causes a decrease in the price level. We'll see inflation come back down and a decrease in national output or national income, a fall in Y. So we can illustrate that on the graph in just a moment. Let's first talk about the other tool in the toolkit of fiscal policymakers in order to reduce an inflationary gap. Of course, a reduction in government spending is more direct than an increase in taxes. Reduced government spending is going to immediately and directly reduce the level of aggregate demand in the economy. It's going to have a multiplier effect as well. So the reduction in aggregate demand will be greater than the change in government spending. This has been explained in previous videos. So as AD falls, we're going to see the inflation rate fall, lower price level, and the level of real GDP fall or decrease in national income. In this way, contractionary fiscal policy can be used to reduce the level of aggregate demand and achieve the macroeconomic objectives of lower inflation. They'll bring down the inflation rate. Full employment will get back to full employment because this economy was producing beyond full employment, which sounds great, but it's not because it leads to cost push inflation and stable economic growth. The growth that the economy was experiencing as it went from YFE to Y1 was only short term. This was short run. We've talked about short run growth versus long run growth. This is not sustainable. Y1 is unsustainable. Reducing aggregate demand through contractionary fiscal policies can help achieve a more sustainable outcome for this country. And the effect can be seen on the graph. Higher taxes and reduced government spending lead to a reduction in aggregate demand as the total expenditures in the economy fall due to lower disposable incomes or reduced spending by government and output is restored at the full employment level. So this will lead to disinflation. 
probably not deflation because at PL1, this economy had very high inflation. So the goal here is not to lower the price level, rather just to reduce the rate of inflation, bring it down to a more stable level, which is one of those macroeconomic objectives. And output has returned to full employment as well. We are now back to YFE, where the country has its natural rate of unemployment. Only this is frictional and structural. These are the quote unquote healthy types of unemployment that a country producing a full employment will have. So we've talked about expansionary fiscal policy in our last video. And in this video, we talked about contractionary fiscal policy. When a government decreases government spending or increases taxes with the goal of reducing AD, reducing real GDP and reducing the rate of inflation. Here we go. One step at a time, don't believe